from West Virginia Public Broadcasting. Support for the following is provided by the West Virginia Department of Education and West Virginia Public Broadcasting. Hey! Hey everyone, it's Education Station, the show where we invite teachers from all across West Virginia to submit videos of themselves teaching their favorite lessons. In today's episode, we've got three exciting lessons about reading, rhyming, and Spanish. Well, hello and welcome back, everyone. I'm your host, Alex Milanese, and we're kicking things off today with an exciting read aloud story. Miss Turpin is going to share a story about a very energetic little pig named Olivia. Let's check it out. My name's Brianna Turpin, and I'm a senior at Pikeview High School. I am attending careers and education classes at Mercer County, Texas. Today I'm going to be reading Olivia by Ian Falcomer, and as I'm reading the book, I want you to go through and write down activities that she's doing throughout the book. And now we're going to begin reading Olivia, written and illustrated by Ian Falcomer. To the real Olivia and Ian, and to William, who didn't arrive in time to appear in this book. This is Olivia. She is good at lots of things. She is very good at wearing people out. She even wears herself out. Olivia has a little brother named Ian. He's always copying. Sometimes Ian just won't leave her alone, so Olivia has to be firm. Olivia lives with her mother, her father, her brother, her dog, Perry, and Edwin the cat. In the morning after she gets up and moves the cat and brushes her teeth and combs her ears and moves the cat, Olivia gets dressed. She has to try on everything. On sunny days, Olivia likes to go to the beach. She feels it's important to come prepared. Last summer when Olivia was little, her mother showed her how to make sandcastles. She got pretty good. Sometimes Olivia likes to bask in the sun. When her mother sees that she's had enough, they go home. Every day, Olivia is supposed to take a nap. It's time for your you-know-what, her mother says. Of course, Olivia is not at all sleepy. On rainy days, Olivia likes to go to the museum. She heads straight for her favorite picture. Olivia looks at it for a long time. What could she be thinking? But there is one painting Olivia just doesn't get. I could do that in about five minutes, she says to her mother. As soon as she gets home, she gives it a try. Time out. After a nice bath and a nice dinner, it's time for bed. But of course, Olivia is not at all sleepy. Only five books tonight, Mommy, she says. No, Olivia, just one. How about four? Two. Three? Oh, all right, three, but that's it. When they finish reading, Olivia's mother gives her a kiss and says, you know, you really wear me out, but I love you anyway. And Olivia gives her a kiss back and says, I love you anyway, too. The end. Now that we've read the book, we're going to talk about the activities that Olivia was doing throughout the book. You might have them all written down on your paper, but if not, it's okay. I'm going to be putting them on the board. One of the things that Olivia done in the book was she brushed her teeth. Another thing Olivia done in the book was she went to the museum. She had also got dressed and after Olivia goes to the museum we know that she paints on the walls and gets in trouble so I put that she paints.
And at night, Olivia's mom reads the books to her, so we put that she reads. Next we have Olivia goes to the beach. And we know that when Olivia's at the beach, she makes sand castles. And we know when Olivia gets home from the beach, she takes naps. Olivia also combs her ears. When she's at the beach, she pans in the sun. And she also takes a bath. Now that we've discussed the activities that Olivia done throughout the book, I have a Venn diagram on the board. One side is sunny, one side is rainy, and the middle is for both. And what we're going to do is I'm going to go through and we're going to put the activities that she does either on sunny, rainy, or both so we know what she does on sunny days, rainy days, and what she does just about every day. So for combs her ears, where do you think it would go? Both. So when she tans in the sun, where do you think it would go? Sunny. When she gets stressed, where do you think it would go? Both. Where do you think reads would, or when she reads, where do you think that would go? Both again. She brushes her teeth, so where do you think that would go? It would go on both again. When she goes to the museum, where do you think that would go? Rainy because in the book, Olivia said that on rainy days, she goes to the museum. And when she goes to the beach, where do you think that would go? Sunny, because in the book, Olivia said on sunny days, she likes to go to the beach. And she also takes baths, so where do you think that would go? Both. Now it says in the book that Olivia paints. So where do you think that would go? It would go on rainy because in the book it says that Olivia paints after she goes to the museum. And we know that she goes to the museum on rainy days. She also takes snaps. Where do you think that would go? It would go on both. And Olivia also makes sandcastles. Where do you think that would go? It would go on sunny, because we know that on sunny days, Olivia goes to the beach. So that's when she tans. Now that we've discussed the activities that Olivia done throughout the book and what she does on rainy and sunny days, what are things that resemble what you do on rainy and sunny days? Thanks, Ms. Turpin. All right, now in our next segment, we're going to hear another story, and this time it's by the one and only Dr. Seuss. Not only is Miss Reed going to read the story to us, but she's also going to teach us a little bit about rhyming. Let's check it out. Hi everybody, my name is Emma, and today we're going to be reading Hop on Pop. Hop on Pop is full of rhymes, and rhymes are words that have the same end sound. So hop and pop both have the op sound at the end, so they rhyme. So through this book, you're going to see a lot of rhyming words. Up, pup, pup is up. Cup, pup, pup in cup. Pup, cup, cup on pup. Mouse, house, mouse on house. House, mouse, house on mouse. All, tall, we all are tall. All, small, we all are small. All, ball. We all play ball. 
ball wall up on a wall all fall fall off the wall day play we play all day night fight we fight all night he me he is after me him jim jim is after him c b we see a b c b three we now see three three tree three fish in a tree fish in a tree how can that be red red they call me red red bed i'm in bed red ned ted and ed in bed pat pat they call him pat pat sat pat sat on a hat pat cat pat sat on a cat pat bat pat sat on bat no pat no don't sit on that sad dad bad had dad is sad very very sad he had a bad day what a day dad had thing thing what is that thing thing sing that thing can sing song long a long long song goodbye thing you sing too long walk walk we like to walk walk talk we like to talk hop pop we like to hop we like to hop on top of pop stop you must not hop on pop Mr. Brown, Mrs. Brown, Mr. Brown is upside down. He's very silly. Pop up, brown down. Pup is down. Where is brown? Where is brown? There is brown. Mr. Brown is out of town. Back, black. Brown came back. Brown came back with Mr. Black. Snack, snack. Eat a snack. Eat a snack with brown and black. Jump, bump. He jumped, he bumped. Fast, past. He went past fast. Went, Tent sent. He went into the tent. I sent him out of the tent. Wet, get. Two dogs get wet. Help, yelp. They yelp for help. Hill, will. Will went uphill. Will, hill still. Will is uphill still. Father, mother, sister, brother. That one is my other brother. There's the other brother. My brothers read a little bit words like if and it. My father can read big words, too, like Constantinople and Timbuktu. C. 
Say, say, what does this say? Ask me tomorrow, but not today. The end. So, now that you know what a rhyme is, let's see if you can rhyme. Here's the word thing. The N sound is ing. Can you think of any words that sound like thing? Here are a few if you are stuck. Ring, wing, sing, fling, and bling. Can you think of anything that sounds like make? The N sound is ache. Can you find anything that rhymes with make? Things that rhyme with make are cake, bake, rake, fake, lake. And a name that rhymes with make is Jake. Here's face. Ace is the N sound. F Ace. Can you think of anything that rhymes with face? Things that rhyme with face are lace, race, and place. The last one is dig, d, ig. Ig is your N sound. Can you think of anything that rhymes with dig? If you need some help, some words that rhyme with dig are big, fig, and rig. You guys did very good, and keep trying to find words that rhyme together. Thanks, Miss Reed. Okay, for our final segment today, we're going to investigate another language. Miss Smith is going to help us understand how to count in Spanish. Let's check it out. Hello. Today we're going to talk about numbers in Spanish, los números, um, and show you how they're similar and how they're different from ours. From one through 15, from one through 15, these are all different, okay, different numbers. They don't look alike. Um, then if you see from 16 through 19, you see some similarity in those numbers because it's like our 16, 17, 18, 19. These are the upper teens. So we have cero, uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve, diez. Usually people learn one to 10 and then beyond that it gets a little harder. Once, doce, trece, catorce, quince. You might have noticed trece sounds like trace. Catorce is similar but not quite the same as cuatro. Um, You'll see some more similarities when we get to the bigger numbers. Okay. Dieciséis, and all that is, is a combination of diez and seis. And they put it together as one word. Dieciséis, diecisiete, 
18, 19, and then 20. Okay. 20 is 20. Now, 21 would be 21, and again, they are combined. You can see a, a slight uh, change here. The E becomes I before you put the uno on. The same thing would be true of 22, 22, 23, up through 29. So I didn't write them all out. Um, all right, then we go to 30, and 30 is a little bit like Tres, right? Treinta. Now what happens? Treinta y uno. So when you start past 30, when you go to 31, they are not combined anymore like 21 was. You have to do it as separate words. The Y means and. So you're saying 30 and one. 32 would be treinta y dos, and so forth. Cuarenta. 50, 50. Do you hear how it's similar to cinco, huh? 50. 60, 70, 80, like ocho, 90, 100. 100 is like our word for cent. You can see it may be more here. Ciento uno. Anything over 100 is ciento, okay, ciento. So the only time we use the word cien is when it's 100 even. Um, but I wanted you to notice this. Sesenta is like six, like seis. Setenta, the T in it, like in siete. Ochenta, like ocho, noventa, similar to nueve. So we have these carryovers from the lower numbers up to the higher numbers. And that creates some problems sometimes uh, for foreign speakers. This one, uno, okay, the one in a lot of other countries, not just Spanish-speaking countries, um, the one is written with this little, what I call a tail on it. All right, uh, which sometimes looks like our seven. Their sevens are written like this with a line through them. That's so that you don't, you know, confuse the one and the seven. So the one, the seven. Okay. Those are the two numbers that are the most different from the way we, we write them. There are other. Um, differences like the four, which in, in some countries is enclosed at the top, or the eight that they make with two separate circles uh, rather than um, in, in the infinity sign. Um, but basically this is it with the Spanish numbers. Now, you, of course, you can go on. I didn't go past 100. Now. If we're talking about cost, because usually if you're traveling to another country and you have to order food or other items, you need to know how much something costs if it's not already written on uh, a screen or on, you know, if there's not a menu. So if you want to ask the cost or el precio of something, you say cuanto es or if it's something plural, cuanto son. Cuanto means how much, like quantity, okay? So cuanto es, like un café, cuanto es un café, right? They would tell you treinta y cinco pesos. And notice also, you thought that was dollars, didn't you, at first? This is a peso sign. The dollar sign has two vertical marks. So you have to be careful about that. So, ¿cuánto es un café? 35 pesos. And that's not an awful lot. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is that over here, the number one, when, you, when we counted, was uno. The only time you use uno is when you are counting, uno, dos, tres, or if you're playing the game uno. Otherwise, one 
is either un or una. And I may have mentioned before that in Spanish you have masculine and feminine. All nouns are either masculine or feminine. Doesn't have anything to do with people. It's not male, female. Okay. So m most words in Spanish that end in O are going, uh, that end in O, like um, taco, for example, is masculine. That's really easy to see that. But tamale, not so easy to see because it doesn't end in an E, in an O, it ends in an E. Generally speaking, those words are also masculine. This is the way you can tell probably 98% of the time. If a, if a noun ends in an A, then it is feminine, okay? And you would use una, okay? So un is masculine, una is feminine, All right? Now, dos sangrias, you don't have to just order one of something. How much are two sangrias, okay? We use son because two sangrias is plural. We can't use es anymore. Cuanto son dos sangrias? All right, this would be ciento veinte pesos. Remember I told you ciento is used for anything over 100. Ciento veinte pesos. The question here, would we use ace or son? Ace or son? Son. Nope. <laughs> Es. Cuanto es una fajita? Good try, though. Cuanto es una fajita? Sesenta y cinco pesos. And you use that, this E, looks like it's a Y, but it's pronounced E. Okay. Sesenta y cinco. Cuanto es un tamale? Cien pesos. We just use cien because it's 100 even, right? Cuanto es un taco? Ochenta y cinco pesos. Okay, we have here dos hamburguesas, two hamburgers. So we're going to have to use son, okay? Cuanto son dos hamburguesas? Now, I threw in a big number here. It's easy. Dos cientos. You just put dos in front of the word ciento, put an S on it because now it's plural. Doscientos treinta pesos. So this is just an idea I wanted to mention the una and una because when I taught you that uno means one, I didn't lie but it's only used when you count, all right? And this is the cost, precio, and the numbers to 100. I hope you have learned something today and enjoyed it. Thanks, Ms. Smith. All right, well, that wraps up everything for us here today on Education Station. We want to thank everyone who shared their awesome lessons, and we want to thank you for watching. We'll see you next time right here on Education Station.